Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Python script that I created that generates this trust string curve using Rainberg Osgood relationship. So we know that when we are performing a finite element analysis where we have material nonlinearity, uh, we should define the stress strain curve for the plastic region um, in the FEA software. And uh, sometimes we don't have experimental data for a given material, so we usually use some simplifications such as these ones shown here. Okay. And uh, the one that this Python script uses is the Bremberg Osgood relationship. So you might know this expression. This script doesn't use this expression actually because the terms k and n are not so easy to find. So we are going to use a modified expression, which is this one. So you see that this one relates uh, engineering strain to engineering stress using modulus of elasticity. Uh, yield strength and n and n can be calculated using this expression and in this expression we have maximum elongation ultimating style strength and yield strength um, this expression relates engineering strength to engineering stress we should transform it into true stress strain before using it in the fea software okay so basically, this is the procedure. Uh, and then uh, here we have an example with a ASTM A36. So these are the mechanical properties used. And uh, it's pretty easy to find these properties. You should just research for a a ASTM A36 mechanical properties. And then uh, you would find these here, for example. You see that we have the UTS. There is a minimum and maximum value. You should um, use the minimum value to be more conservative. And then we have the yield strength, 250, elongation at break, modulus of elasticity, and so on. Okay. Okay, so here we have uh, all these steps that uh, the scripts go, go through. Okay, so you can uh, look at it. And at the end of this blog post, we have uh, explore further with Python. And then here you, you can click on this link to download the Python script. Okay, you, you should uh, um, put your name and email here, and then uh, the script is going to be sent, uh, sent, to, uh, sent to your email. Okay, now this is the script. And you see that uh, we have some libraries that are used, so you should have it installed in your co computer. Uh, so you should install uh, NumPy and Matplotlib. Okay, and then uh, to use this script, we can open up CMD. We can open up a terminal in this folder where the Python script is located. And then um, copy the Python script name and then uh, write down Python and then the Python script name and then press enter. And then you see that it complains that we should have some arguments. So here we have the first argument, E, that is modulus of elasticity, and then uh, this is uh, the Poisson's ratio, yield strength, ultimate tensile strength, maximum elongation, density. And then uh, here we have some optional arguments. The uh, first one is to make a plot, stress strain curve plot. Uh, this one is to uh, generate a .inp file that can be used in Abacus. And then this one is uh, to generate a CSV file. Okay. So let me press, let me, uh, let me put these arguments here. So let me go back here to ASTM A36. So first one is um, uh, the modulus of elasticity, 200 gigapascal. Here we should, you should be consistent with the units. 
Okay. So for example, in Abacus, uh, the units should be consistent. If you search for Abacus units, go to images, and then you, we have this table of units. And then I usually use the second column, SI in millimeters. So here we have uh, stress in MPA. So the Young's modulus should be in MPA. 200 gigapascal is 200,000 megapascal. So here I should put 200,000 uh, megapascal. And then portions ratio, we also find it here. 0 0.26 portions ratio, 0 0.26. And then yield strength is 250 MPA. It should be in MPA for this set of units. Um, next one is um, UTS, UTS 400 minimum. And then next argument is a maximum elongation. And then we have here 20%. Sorry, you should uh, input in percentage like this, 20. And the uh, next argument is density. So here in this set of units, we have um, mass in tons and, and uh, length in mm. So the densities should be in tons per a cubic mm. <clears throat> here we have uh, 7.8. So here we are going to have uh, something like 7.8 e minus 9. Okay. Uh, this is density. Okay, so uh, just uh, to, to clarify, uh, the calculation of the stress strain curve doesn't take into account density or Poisson's ratio, but I, I, I have these arguments here because uh, this also generates the .inp file for Abacus, uh, and these are needed properties for for the for the material in Abacus. Okay, you're gonna see it uh, shortly. So here is rho that is density, and then uh, this is an optional argument minus minus plot. So here we are going to have a plot. Let me run it as is. Okay, so this is the stress strain curve generated. It's stress in MPA, is strain in, is, uh, there is no units for strain. And uh, here it, or it works like a percentage. So you see that uh, here we have the yield strength and the UTS. This is true stress strength. This is the true stress strength curve. Okay, so here we have inputted uh, engineering stress that is 250 is engineering, and here it transformed it into true stress strength. Okay, so you see that for 20%, uh, we don't have exactly the 400 that we inputted here. Okay. Um, all right, you see that uh, this curve that, that is generated up until this point, this is the ultimate tensile strength, true, true in, in true stress. Um, and you see that after this point, we have an extension of this curve. This extension is just to yield to more conservative calculation after this point. Because if we don't define this line here, the software will uh, get the inclination of the this line here at the end of this curve. So it's going to be something like this. Okay, so here just defined a a linear uh, linear equation that has ten percent of the inclination of this last segment. Okay. All right, uh, but here we have just this plot generated. You can save it if you want to. Let me close it. Now let me run it again. And you see that in the folder that we are running this, uh, this script, there is nothing generated. 
But now if we run it again, but putting the argument minus minus ab abacus like this, it's going to create uh, this image again. We can close it. But now it's going to also create a .imp file. If we double click on it, you're going to see that we have here the definition of the material for Abacus. And you can uh, use it in the .imp file of a module, of, a, of an Abacus module. Okay, so here we have the density defined. We have the elastic type isotropic material and modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, and then uh, the plastic curve defined. Okay, so first column is stress, second column is strain. Okay, so we should always start with a plastic string equals zero, and then we have here the, uh, the force stress. So notice one thing, the eel strength is 250, right? And here we have uh, this first value for plastic string equals zero, not equal to 250. Why is that? There is another important thing that this Python um, script does. Um, let me go back to, to this image. Okay, so we know that we have the elastic region here, and then we have the proportional limit, and after the proportional limit, we have the yield stress. The yield stress is defined as um, the point after the proportional limit where we have a plastic string equals 0.2%. Okay, uh, what the script does is, well, it calculates the proportional limit as the first point and then the for for two percent zero point two percent plastic string, uh, we have the yield strength. Okay, and you see that uh, it's not exactly equal because here we have true stress versus true string. So at approximately zero point two percent, we have two hundred fifty. Okay, so this first point is the elastic uh, uh, proportional limit. Okay, uh, including the stress strain curve in this way is more accurate in an FEA software to perform a stress analysis. Okay, and usually when we input the stress strain curve like this, we can consider uh, plastic strain up until 0.2%. Uh, to be okay. Okay, technically we are not having the material yielding up until this value of plastic string. Okay. All right. Um, let me close this one. And now let me go back to the CMD and then let me run it again. And uh, now I don't want to see the plot. And I don't let me generate the abacus file again. But now I want to also include the argument minus minus CSV. And now you see that we have this CSV file that was generated. You can open it. And then uh, here we have this data. But we just have like uh, in the same cell we have stress, comma strain, and then a stress value, comma, string. We should separate it by comma. So select everything and then go to data, text to columns, delimited, next, and then separate it by comma, next, and finish. Now we have one column. Let me make it bigger. We have one column for stress and another column string okay i included this type of output because now we can uh, just copy this data and use it in any fea software you want to if you're not using abacus okay also um in the dot inp file uh if you have notepad plus plus installed 
uh, you can uh, hold the Alt Control. Oh, sorry, the Alt uh, button, and then select with the left mouse button, and then you can select a column like this. See, now I have all these stress values copied. I can like paste it here, for example. Okay, you can also paste it in your FEA software. Okay, uh, just one last thing that I need to tell you guys. Uh, this, ex uh, this, uh, this technique, the Ringberg Osgood relationship, is applicable for. Uh, let me see where I have it. It's applicable for ductile metals that harden with plastic deformation. Okay, and another another important thing is um, I have here in the tenth item the references used for these procedures. So we have these three references, so you can uh, uh, download it and read it, and um, everything that I I, ha I have used here is is from these three papers. Okay. All right, I guess I have uh, showed everything I wanted. So read everything here. I have, uh, so this video was not intended to show uh, the procedure step by step, okay? You can read this blog post and uh, see how it's performed. You can also uh, look at these Python, uh, this Python script and uh, try to understand it. It's not, uh, oh, sorry, this is not the one. Uh, this one and try to understand it. It's not uh, it's not hard to understand. It's pretty pretty easy, and this uh, this is very helpful because uh, many times when I'm performing, for example, a stress analysis, I don't have experimental data for a given material. So it's uh, really useful to to have uh, this script for the first runs, and then in the future. When the project is more advanced, we can uh, get experimental data for the materials used in, in the module. Okay. All right. So uh, just one, one thing more. Um, if you want me to improve, if you find any error in this uh, Python script, or if you want me to include some type of, uh, I don't know, uh, anything like uh, maybe you want me to to when we get uh, this output, uh, the name of this file uh, should be the name of the material. So we should have the an input for the name of the material. I don't know. If you have any suggestion, please uh, don't hesitate to reach me out, and uh, you 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 can uh, leave a reply here in my blog post, or you can send me an email uh, to give me su suggestions about these. This Python script.